knowledge and uh, perspectives. So while we are uh, being part of this uh, series of uh, book reviews, we are actually being exposed to uh, different kinds of uh, perspectives, uh, different ideologies, uh, different creeds, and different uh, uh, different affiliations. So I think uh, that is the that is the value of this program. So what I am coming to say is that. Um, we are not just being introduced to a single book when we attend a, a, a book review. Rather, we are we are getting inspiration to read another hundred books uh, from these um, eminent uh, personalities. So, I would like to congratulate once again uh, the students who, who initiate this program and also uh, our respected teachers uh, who are inspiring our students. Um, today. Um, I'm, I'm immensely glad and privileged uh, to introduce um, the resource person of uh, today's session, uh, uh, Reverend Dr. Kurian Kachapali, CMI, uh, to you. So one can uh, uh, keep on speaking attributes uh, uh, and achievements of this person, uh, like uh, he's a person who holds masters in uh, uh, English literature and uh, psychology other than philosophy and one who has a doctorate and licentiate in philosophy uh, from Leuven, Belgium, and uh, one who is a uh, TEDx uh, speaker, uh, one who is uh, a guest faculty uh, in uh, reputed international universities, uh, one who has uh, published a lot of uh, uh, famous books and scientific journals, and uh, a person who is currently the president of uh, Dharmara Vidya Shetram Bangalore, and the, the, the list goes like that. But uh, among these attributes, uh, uh, among these attributes and achievements, what values most for me is the, that uh, he has been um, a teacher par excellence for the last 25 years. I am, I am one of the thousands of students who always proudly, uh, who is proudly boast that uh, Father Kurian Kachabali has taught me philosophy. I'm one of those thousands of students. So um, I still remember those uh, the days, uh, uh, those classes. Uh, one fine day, he would come to our class and he would just, to our greater embarrassment, he would prove that God does not exist with the logical reasoning. And in the very next day, he would come to our class and prove uh, uh, supported by a list of logical arguments that God exists. So it was uh, really um, exciting, uh, wonderful uh, uh, classes, and I still remember those wonderful days as a, being a student in his class. So, um, so we are really proud to have uh, Dr. Reverend Dr. Kurian Kachapali CMI to be the guide uh, in, in today's session. And um, I'm looking forward to hearing from you after a long time. So, Father Kurian, um, uh, on behalf of the entire college, St. Joseph's College Devgiri, on behalf of the management, the principal, and the whole faculty members, especially on behalf of the English department, I would like to extend a warm welcome um, to this session and wish you a, a very fruitful session. Thank you very much. And over to you, Father. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Father Anto. Am I audible? Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Okay. Yeah, dear Father Anto, the Vice Principal, uh, Brother Ajit, uh, professors and scholars of St. Joseph's College, especially the Department of English Literature. That's what I am told. You can conveniently forget all what Father Anto has said because that's not the very important thing, because he's very kind to me, that's why he spoke well of. Now, today my duty will be to introduce this well-known book by Samuel Clark, A Demonstration of the Being and the Attributes of God. As you know, this is a collection of lectures called Richard Boyle Lecture Series, published in 1705. The lectures were delivered in 1704 and published in 1705. In this lecture series, there are 12 sections. 
and all together around 90 plus pages so maybe you can also read it's not a big book especially literature students you should read and enjoy such books now before we come to the book as such a few words of caution as the title sounds it's a demonstration it's a proof for the being existence and attributes that is the nature of god so i am going to take you to the world of philosophy and logic because it's all about proof therefore get ready to enter into the world of philosophy and logic but a word of caution i said when we say god talk we don't mean god talking to you and me rather it's about human talk about god that's the first point we have to keep in mind second as we talk about god the main tool we use is reason rationality not faith i don't rule out faith but in today's context as we review the book a demonstration our priority will be to see evaluate the book from the perspective of reason so these are the two important notes now this book has two parts as the title indicates one is all about the existence of god and second about the nature or attributes qualities of god my focus will be on the first part especially the argument or demonstration about the existence of god in order to understand the logic of this proof we have to keep in mind two important concepts hope you are there i see about 70 people signed in the two concepts one i would say db dependent being dependent being the other self existent being pb and scb now what is db a dependent being a being whose existence is accounted for by the causal activity of the other once again i repeat db is a being whose existence is accounted for by the causal activity of the other in the words of saint anselm an existence explained by other that is a simple simple terms a being an existence explained by other now what is a cb self existent being whose existence is accounted for by its own nature or by itself in anselm terminology a being explained by itself hope you are thorough with these two terms db and scb dependent being and self existent being now with the understanding of these two concepts let's come to the logic the syllogism i don't know how many of you have studied a little bit of logic from literature logic yes i moved from logic to literature and back to philosophy that was my journey in my life now the syllogism has three propositions the major the minor and the conclusion or in simple terms the first proposition the second proposition and the third the first two we call it premises the non facts and conclusion is the third which is not known now if you are ready here is the syllogism every being is either a db or a cb either a db or a cb this is the first proposition the major now what is the minor not all being can be a db oh. not all being can be a db 
Therefore, there exists a SCB. Therefore, there exists a SCB. Have you got the syllogism? The major, every being is either a DB or a CB. Minor, not every being can be a DB. The conclusion, therefore, there exists a self-existent being. Now, for Clark, this self-existent being is what he understands as God. That is the very purpose of his demonstration, his argument. Now, if you are familiar with now this syllogism, let me give a general explanation of the veracity, the truthfulness of the conclusion. If you remember your logic, if you have studied, in logic, if both the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. In other words, if the conclusion is true, both the premises should be true. There is another way in deductive lo logic. Once again, if both the premises are true, the conclusion will be true. Conversely, if the conclusion is true, both the premises have to be true. Now, the attempt of Clark in his book, A Demonstration, is to prove that the major premise and the minor premise are true. Therefore, the conclusion ought to be true. Therefore, let us take the first major premise. Every being is either a DB, that is dependent being, or a CB, self-existent being. Now, the critics, or what we call the opponents, yeah, remember these two words, critics or opponents, then the other side, we are proponents or supporters. Hello? Are you following me? Yes, Father. Yes. Yeah, no. you, can, you can say hello or etc. in the chat box so that yes, I, can, I can be sure you people are still awake because this is philosophy and logic. <laughs> okay. And this is also afternoon. Yes. Yes. Amadou, thank you. Yeah. You see, now the critics would say there is a problem with the major premise. Why? What Clark says is a DB or a CB. Whereas the critique says he should have been a DB or non-DB. You see, the first one is what Clark used. Every being is a DB or a CB. But critics say that is not correct. He should have been a DB or non-DB. What is his non-DB? I don't know you are familiar with the two terms in logic. Contrary and contradictory. Contrary are just opposites. For example, black, white. You see? Or long, short. This is what we call in English antonyms, opposites. But DB, non-DB, these are called contradictory, like white, non-white. Now, what is the major difference? In, a, in opposition or in, in antonyms, when we say white and black, they don't exhaust, they don't cover all the ranges of colors in a spectrum. You see, in a color spectrum, you can talk about different kind of colors. Of these many colors, only two are specified like black and white. But when you take contradictory, for example, DB or non-DB or white or non-white, both together, you cover the entire range of colors. Now, why critiques question Clark? Because as I said, Anselm's definition gives three options. Number one, explain by other. Number two, explain by nothing. And third, explain by itself. Now, explain by other is a dependent being. 
explained by itself is self-existent being, but there is a third one, the middle one, explained by nothing. That's what critiques take up. The so-called skeptics, materialist, naturalist, they would say this should be the correct explanation, explained by nothing. Now, based on this second option that is explained by nothing, the critiques explain this universe. They would say this universe is nothing. Now, please listen carefully. It's a chain of dependent beings produced one from the other in infinite progression without any original cause at all. I know it's a bit difficult to remember. I'm going to repeat. What is this universe? It's all a collection of dependent beings. Remember dependent beings definition? A being whose existence is accounted for by the causal activity of the other. So a chain of dependent beings, what the critics say, one produced by the other in infinite progression, but without any original cause. Now, how does Clark respond to these critiques, explanation of this universe? Clark answer is an yes and a no. What is that yes? He would say an infinite progression of dependent being is possible. Why? Why infinite progression is possible? Anybody? Why infinite progression is possible? Because here he uses the mathematics. In mathematics, there is no last number. Numbers are infinite. You say any number, you can say plus one, or you can say any number, you can say minus one. In other words, numbers are ad infinitum. It goes on infinitely without any stop. Therefore, he would say, this chain of dependent beings can progress infinitely. There is no problem. But what is Clark objection? This progression cannot be of dependent beings. You see, for that he puts forward two arguments. Argument from within and argument from without. Argument from within, ad intra argument from without are the extra now first i take argument from outside are the extra are you familiar with a little bit of latin are the extra means argument from from outside now what is the argument from outside he says if what the critiques what the skeptics, what the naturalists say is true. This collection of infinite series of dependent beings cannot be caused from outside. Why? They would say all what is, is in the series. And apart from the series, there is nothing. Therefore, nothing can cause from outside. Let me give a very simple example. Suppose you are sitting in a classroom or in a room. Just imagine that room is the whole world. Then if room is all what exists, can it be influenced from outside? No, not at all, because there is nothing except from the classrooms. That is exactly what he is saying. If the theists say, if the critics say, if the skeptics say that the universe is an infinite series of dependent beings, then that series cannot be caused from outside. Now the second argument, Ad Indra, that is from within. What is the argument from within? They say, take the chain of dependent beings. Why very definition, a dependent being cannot be a necessary being. And if a part is not necessary, the whole can never be necessary. Remember the 
relation between part and whole. That's also applicable in literature. From knowing one or other, for example, you know Shakespeare's one play, because my thesis was on Hamlet. By reading Hamlet, you can make a general conclusion about all the writings of Shakespeare. Because from a particular play, you, you can speak about the entire plays of Shakespeare. Because from part, you cannot reduce a conclusion about the whole. On the contrary, if you know the whole, you can also speak about the part. For example, there are 100 cows. And you say, all cows are black. Now, what about one cow? Surely it's also black. On the contrary, if you say, I know one cow, and that is black. Therefore, can I say all cows are black? That may not be true. You see? Therefore, based on this argument from without and within, Clark concludes, you see, this infinite series which cannot be caused from within and which cannot be necessary from within cannot be a reality unless there is a, another being, a different type of being, which he call self-existent being. Once again, an infinite series of being which cannot be caused from without and which cannot be necessary from within Still, if they exist, there must be an explanation, and that explanation can be given only by the self-existent be. Therefore, he would say his argument is true. The major premise that every being must be either a GB or a CB is true. Now, quickly, I know time is getting far. Now, we go to the minor premise. Not every being can be a DB. Now here there are so many criticism leveled by all types of people except a few supporters. Now I'm going to pick up two important, which is quite well known, two criticisms. Criticisms. Number one, Mark is accused of making a mistake, a mistake in treatment. And second, a mistake in inference. Now, what is the mistake in treatment? He would say, because the collection, because a collection of dependent beings needs an explanation, just as a single being needs an explanation. Once again, mistake of treating the collection of dependent beings as if it is a single dependent being. I can give an example, then it will be more clear for you. It is as if treating an album as if it is a single stamp. That is the first mistake allegedly accused of Clark. What is that? Considering or taking an album of stamps as if it were a stamp, a stamp. What is the response of Clark? Clark would say, no, I don't do that mistake. Moreover, he would say, if anybody equates an album of stamps to a stamp, it's a real mistake. However, having said that, we can ask different types of questions regarding one about the album, second question regarding a stamp, a third question, very generic question, after all, what is stamp? You see, there are questions at different levels. Question about the album, which is a collection of stamps. Secondly, question about a stamp. And thirdly, a very general question about what is stamp? So that is the first response. Now, the second criticism, this is later raised by Bertrand Russell. I don't know your head about Bertrand Russell. Russell says very funny argument. He says, Clark is making a mistake in inference. What is that? 
because every individual being needs an explanation you also infer that a collection of dependent beings needs an explanation and his example is very funny every human being has a mother therefore the entire humanity as a whole should have a mother i don't know you follow that example from one you are generalizing to the collection every human person has a mother therefore russell argues that that humanity as a whole should have a mother and what could be the response of the supporters of clark you would say the argument of Tram Russell is very silly. It is rationally untenable. It is as if asking that in a huge collection, because one item is light in weight, the whole collection is light in weight. That is a counter argument by supporters. What is that? Russell thinks that because a single item in the collection is light in weight, Therefore, the entire collection is light in weight. We know that is a nonsense. What we can say about a collection? If one item is, let's say, one kilo, the collection will be definitely more than one kilo. You see? So that is the counter argument. Then moreover, Clark supporters would say, we don't need to make such a generalized inference. Rather, philosophers, have at their report to at their disposal the famous principle called PSR. PSR means principle of sufficient reason. Principle of sufficient reason. What does it mean? Whatever exists should have a cause for its existence. Whatever exists should have a cause for its existence. Now last attempt how do we know this psr is true some people will argue it is given to us in intuition therefore we don't need any argument it is given in intuition but critics would say that intuition is not given to everybody therefore we can't trust therefore they reject it now, a second argument, which is very popular today, which is proposed by the scientist Karl Popper. I don't know how many of you have heard about Karl Popper. He introduced what we call the principle of falsification. Have you heard about principle of falsification? Principle of falsification. This is in contrast to principle of verification, which we use in science. Science is based on the principle of verification. For example, H2O is equal to water. You can go to the laboratory. You can mix hydrogen and oxygen in the ratio of 2 is to 1. And if it produces, you can verify whether it is water or not. But certain things you cannot verify. For example, we say all humans are mortal. That's a very common expression, statement. All humans are mortal. But how do you verify? How do you verify? There is no way whatsoever you can verify that statement. Rather, Karl Popper would say it's not to verify, but you can falsify. What is that falsification would mean? You take that statement to be true until there is one instance, one example, whereby you can prove that there is a human person who is beyond mortality, death. At that moment, that statement, all men are mortal, will be falsified. Similarly, Clark supporters would say the PSR, principle of sufficiency reason, whatever exists, must have a cause for existence, should be taken to be true until it is falsified. In other words, the major premise, 
and the minor premise are proven to be true therefore Clark would say his conclusion is true that is there exists a self-existent being and that self-existent being is what we call what we understand as God I think that's good enough now uh, I will stop for your clarification questions and maybe we together can discuss thank you my dear scholars so thank you dr korean kachapalli for introducing this complex work in a very simple and attractive way and now it's time for the discussion part father kachapalli will be taking questions both in english and malayalam so let's have a healthy discussion good afternoon sir yeah good afternoon yes about the attributes of god and all so i have a question yes please um, the fact that uh, the fact that when you happen to be born tells us which god you believe in and which religion you adhere to and the fact that that more than 1000 uh, different religions around the world at least uh, if not more and uh, thousands of different gods wouldn't that be a strong indication that we created god and not vice versa so uh, my question is that uh, wouldn't it be true to think that religion and in fact god is a deep need that evolves for survival yeah um, thank you what's your good name you said bhavna yeah bhavna um, yes you see i don't know you heard about the famous saying of mark twain mark twain jokingly said mark twain one of the genius ever lived Mark Twain said, "God created humans in His own image and likeness, and in return, humans created God in their own image and likeness." You see, that speaks a volume. Yes, we know there are two different images and characterization and pictures and models of God. Now, which one is true? Which one is true? You see, the basic question is this: God, what we understand, whether uh, whether it is through faith or reason, what we call natural reason, is a reality which people cannot comprehend fully well. You see, even ordinary things in this world we don't understand well. For example, you have a best friend. Can you ever claim? that you understood your best friend the best way possible how do you know you are not understood well if you have a surprise in life that's an indication clear indication that there's something new is from your friend if that is true with the human person is all the more true with something infinite something beyond where we fail to comprehend therefore everybody talks about little bit of a huge reality an infinite reality therefore our knowledge becomes very fragmentary that's our problem therefore we have different opinion we have conflicts in our opinion and that leads to bloodshed violence death that's what we experience today because everybody thinks what i say is the last word and what i say is the true thing and if people go on saying that definitely it will end up in fight but we should and with the humility that we cannot fully comprehend this reality because it is something beyond our human reason reason has its own limitations i don't know whether i have answered your question yes sir yes if you want to clarify something you can add on now i get a question from amalu uh, do you think that religion gave a proper explanation of the existence of god uh, religion is doesn't give an explanation rather than religion is an outcome of the experience of the divine because you see the word religion is from the latin word religare religare means to bind together and what is binding together binding together for a noble cause you see that noble cause is what we understand god so therefore there is an experience of god that experience of god would 
inspire, motivate us to come together. That's what we call religion. That's for Amalu. Now, some Alex, the existence of man dates back to very long time. But the religious scriptures came to existence just thousands of years before. This seems to be a serious question, which questioned the existence of God. <laughs> okay. You see, uh, some, are you there? Some? Hello? Are you there? Some? Hello, Sam? It seems he left. Anyhow, I'd let me answer. You see, now, written document and verbal document, these are two things. We have verbal traditions, what we call oral tradition, then we have written documents. Now, for anything and everything, there is no need that it should be written in scriptures or in, in chronicle. For example, now, Sam, you suppose nothing is written about you now after two years or after 10 years or after 100 years uh, when you are no more there can we say you never existed because nothing is written about you no that is not true whether written or not written you are what you are and that you can't deny of course history may forget People may forget, but the fact remains. You have been and you are there. So therefore, you say humanity existed longer than God, maybe. But that doesn't mean it was not there. You see, now, existing human beings, now people argue very, maybe it is Ethiopia or some part of Africa, we don't know. That's the question with, the, with that. Now, which came first? That is the question. God or man? In your opinion, it's man. But how do you prove that? Is that all the, what we call uh, paradox, whether chicken or the egg is first? So that's what I feel, Alex, Sam Alex. Okay, any other question? Sir? Yes, please. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good um, evening. I don't know if this question matter, but um, as yeah. you have said that this self-existent being is behind the creation of humankind. Uh, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, in a sense. Yes, okay, yes. Um, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Uh, my question is why? Why this self-existent or omnipotent presence created human beings? Or just why are we here? Does the author um, mention about any particular purpose of to our existence? And does in any way our existence, that the existence of human beings complement to the existence of God himself or yes. itself? Yeah. Or um, what God may have intended by creation of humankind? So. Okay. Now, there are two parts of the question. Now, the second part is easy to say. What is our purpose in life? You see, in religious parlance, there are different expressions we use. For example, we say, we serve God. You see, we serve God. Or we also say, for the glory of God. These are very common expressions in all religion, irrespective of what religion you have affinity to. Take any scripture. These expressions are very common at the service of God and for the glory of God. That means our existence does matter, even for God. Now, if you read the mathematician Alfred Not Whiter, that's my branch of philosophy. I am specialized in that. A professor of Cambridge, and finally he ended up in, in Harvard, where he was the chair of the faculty of philosophy. According to him, our deeds. Our very life would add to the beauty of God. That is the very purpose of creation. Now, why we are created? If you want argument from philosophy, there is one. If you want argument from love, uh, argument from religion, there is another argument. What is argument from philosophy? 
You see, the principle of plenitude, the principle of plenitude necessitates, sorry, uh, here electricity failed, but still, I think you can hear. Hello? Yes, Father, we can hear. Yes, sir, we can hear. Yeah, you see, the principle of plenitude, what is plenitude? Plenty. Principle of plenitude necessitates that all the possible existence should be there. This is what Plotinus and others call the great chain of being. That means, let us take the range from 100 to 1. You see, so there are existence which are the quality of 100, some 80, some 50, some 40, some. Now, these are the different levels of existence and humans should be there somewhere. I don't, I don't thereby say we are much superior than anybody else and everybody else. But we are in that range of 1 to 100. Therefore, all possible levels of beings must be realized. Now, what is the religious argument? What religions would talk about? Human creation, which is the apex of creation according to religion, is a outpouring of the love of God. You see, love cannot but give. And that giving is human life. So to all material world, living world, psychic world, intellectual world, and spiritual world. Is that answer sounds logical? Yes, sir. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? Sir? Yes. Sir, so personally, I like to believe that there is a source for sure, but yeah. I don't believe that there is a constant surveillance, just how the religions portray God to be, like always watching our deeds. I believe after the starting point, it's like a chain reaction. So okay. what are your views on that? Yeah, uh, now I, I, am, I am happy that you said there is some sort of source that we all agree. Even natural naturalists would agree there is some power, some source. Now, people don't talk about much about the quality of that source. You see, if you talk about the quality, immediately question comes, why evil? Why suffering? Why natural calamities so at least there is a source whether good or not okay that source now the second part of your question whether that source would follow us through and through our life is that your question right yes sir. whether there is a surveillance of yeah. the what throughout yeah uh, surveillance would mean now if i use an analogy when suppose we are uh, we are all born in a family we are mama, we are papa, and when we are very young, papa, mama, this, they take care of us very well, that caring. But when we are grown up, when we are away, that caring may not be that manifest because we are away. Maybe papa is in Kerala or in Calicut and you will be in USA, UK or elsewhere. Now that surveillance, that caring is not very explicit, although in your papa's heart, in your mama's heart, in their life, that affection, that affinity, that love, that caring will be there, although it's not explicit. Now, if you extend this analogy to God, God by creating has shown his care and love. Whether he is following, whether he is having this kind of surveillance, just like mama doesn't show it explicitly, it's also not possible that God will show it explicitly. But that does not mean God will forget, which is impossible. Do you get that analogy? Yes, sir. but why yeah. are we uh, like personifying the source? Like, can't it be just like a energy or the whole uh, drifting in between religions is happening because of the personification of gods yes. in different styles? So why do we need to do that? Like, can't it be just a source? Yeah, that's a, the right question. Even Clark's second part is all of about this. He says this self-existent being is a tasty God. Now here comes the question what you asked. Why personification? Why attributes, qualities like a God is love, God is light, God is truth? Why? If you go back to Shankaracharya, I am sure you heard about Shankaracharya, man from Kaladi, the Kerala philosopher. Now Shankaracharya would 
propose two types of Brahman, what he called Saguna Brahman and Nirguna Brahman. Now, Saguna Brahman is Brahman, God with all qualifications, whereas Nirguna Brahman is without qualification. Now, for Shankaracharya, being an Advaitin, a monist, for him, Nirguna Brahman is really the supreme. God without attribute. In that case, you are right. Why do we need qualification? Why do we need attributes? Why do we need all kinds of predicates to God? But for humans, in order to foster piety, religion, we need some sort of tangibility. That's what Shankaracharya would say, a kind of concession to foster the piety of the people. He proposed the concept of Saguna Brahman, God with attributes. Therefore, he could say God is immaterial, God is immortal, God is all-powerful, God is all-loving, etc., etc. That's not essential, but we human beings who are fragile, who are frail, who are imperfect, need some media to think about God. That is the very purpose. For example, great mystics, they don't need any predications. They don't, they don't need any attributes. So you are right in that way. Yes, sir. So in short, uh, like it come to a conclusion that the God that we are trying to believe right now is a creation of human beings only. Uh, no, it's a cons it's, I would say not a creation of human beings. It's a consensus of a group of people, what we call a community. That would be a better expression. For example, Christians would speak about a consensus about God through the person of Jesus Christ. Now, Hindus would talk about even Hindus, there are different types of religion. Therefore, each one, those who uh, take care of Ram as the Lord, or those who take about Krishna as the Lord, or even the Trimurti, that is Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwara. So depending upon your different rituals and rites, different creed, that's all a consensus emerged from a kind of community, a living community. And we can't say no to that because that's a living testimony. Because that's something they have experienced. Maybe not all, but at least some. Otherwise, if it is completely false, it cannot survive. It cannot endure over the years. You see? Now, here there is a question. What are the possibilities of DB turning to independent? <laughs> I don't know. That is from Nitu. Nitu, that is a pure contradiction. Nothing can be A and not A at the same time. You see, that is a principle of non-contradiction in logic, in Aristotelian logic, which is used even today in all arguments. So nothing can be a dependent and independent at the same time. Therefore, a de a dependent turning into independent, no, that's not possible. Any other yes, question? Sir? Yes, sir yeah. I have a question. I have a yes. question. Yes, uh, tell your uh, name, please. I am Salim. Yeah. Uh, I am Salim, Salim. Yes, yeah, Salim, yes, Salim, yes. Yeah, yeah. See, my question is, um, what is so unique about Clark's arguments? In fact, I don't find anything unique in his arguments. And the idea of a self-existent, self-independent, self-evident kind of being, that itself is a, is a, is a fundamental problem. The kind of celebristic argument that you put forward. In fact, that is uh, the run-of-the-mill kind of thing. Yeah. by which you are arguing about a major premise, a minor premise, and a conclusion. The, the question of inference itself is a problem. When you say that there is a dependent being and there is a self-evident being, without that religion cannot survive. So it's just yeah. a projection. Okay. It's okay, just a projection. It's just yes. a projection. And the argument that it has survived for a very long time doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything at all. For example, okay. when, you add, when you attribute a number of qualities to God, that's why I asked you the central question. In what way is Clark unique? In fact, I don't find anything unique in Clark's argument. Okay. In fact, that is actually an extension of the entire range of so-called quote-unquote philosophers who have been stretching it out to prove the existence of God. Yeah. Right? 
And okay. then the, the, the idea of, uh, you know, when you bring in a Sankaracharya, I think there is a fundamental problem. Yep. So, uh, though, I, though I missed a, a little bit of the conversation because of the Bluetooth issue. So I, uh, but the, the kind of analogy that you brought in that the five parents love you, care for you and yeah, all that. And yeah, then, that's a, that's and a different then analogy. Say, yeah, that's not, uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, not, yeah, that's not in Sankaracharya. That's another question. Yeah, that's not in Sankaracharya. You were talking about Atman and Brahman. Okay. Advaita okay, yeah. philosophy and all that. And yes. Advaita philosophy and monism and the Western traditions are entirely different. You can, you can, you can strike up an analogy between these two. One thing. Second thing, when you say that, because for, only from that point I could hear. You were you were talking ah, okay, about okay. if I am right. Okay. Yeah. You were talk, you were you were talking about how God, parents look after kids and how they care for them, and then you extend it to God. That kind of a that kind of a leap is not possible. And again, when you talk about this, you know, self evident uh, being. Can you restrict to one question after another? Otherwise, no, I, 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 I I'm just. My point was that, though I missed a little bit of your answer, the first yep. question, okay. your, your reply, I couldn't, I, I couldn't get it because of okay. my technical problem. Okay. I was, but I was trying to point out that my simple question is, in what way is Clark unique in his, if, if he is unique, I don't know whether he is unique or not. No. Uh, from yeah. what I heard uh, from you about Clark, uh, Clark is just uh, like any other very ordinary, uh, you know, very ordinary kind of, I don't even know whether I can call that person a thinker, because the issue of reason that we talk about, yeah. uh, the issue of rationality, the issue of reason, the idea of verification, all yeah. these are increasingly important in this, and religion, by its yeah. very definition, okay. yes. uh, you know, does not admit reason. Okay, now one thing, uh, uh, Salim, no, am I right? Yeah, yeah. now first yes, thing, yes. Uh, I never say that Clark is unique because I just wanted to know. You didn't say so. I just wanted to know what is okay. unique about Clark no. at all. No, what is unique is you see there are uh, for your kind of information there are three families of arguments. Yeah. One is what we call the ontological argument. Second is the cosmological argument. Third is yeah. teleological argument. Now, yeah, uh, Chilos is the problem. Chilos yeah, Chilos no, is wait, the wait. Problem. Now the cosmological argument well established by St. Thomas Aquinas in the medieval ages. Mm. Now, mm. Clark has done, he made that argument. Uh, now, if I quote from uh, people like uh, Newton, that mm. he made it yeah. more complete, forceful, and yeah. cogent. Yeah. Yeah. That's all, that is the uniqueness of Clark. Otherwise, regarding the cosmology argument, there is nothing wrong. It is very old. OK, that's yeah, it, your I first did. question. Now, second, your inference. You say, now, Inference is from something given to what is not given. That is what we understand by inference yeah. or reasoning or argument yeah. in logic. What is yeah. given is called a premise and what is not given is a conclusion. I hope you yeah. understand that difference. Now, yeah. all arguments in any, now mathematics. Now, for example, 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 based on what? Tell me, based on what yeah, you said. I, 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 see, the, the fundamental problem is that yes. you know, the analogies are only roughly corresponding. Yes. To the now, what is the very meaning of analogy, Salim? Yeah, analogy I, means pars partially is, true and partially, partially different. True. The, then then you, with partially true and partially different, you cannot come to an absolute Hello, value. Hello, I think it's disconnected, yes. Uh, from partial values, you cannot jump to absolute values. No, Partial we don't. Values will create. Yeah, the no. problem is, you know, the problem. But I, the problem that I find in class argument, the major premise, the minor premise, and the kind, the kind of conclusion that that's the syllogistic argument with which you began. Yes. That is fundamentally uh, a very basic universal argument in that thing, special in 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 class position. No. And, see. and 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 the, the, the next point is that the, the premises themselves are wrong. No, no, that, uh, no yeah. that, that you can't say. <laughs> now, Salim, what do you say? In, you see, logic is from Aristotle. If you I read know, logic, I studied I mean, logic for now, two years. I studied yeah, logic for two years and yeah, that's also very, for two years. Yeah, that's very good. But that doesn't mean inference would change. 
in you front can't of the you know you can't even talk about mathematics how can you bring in mathematics when you talk about you know uh, attributes of god no no you wait know, a minute wait a minute in terms of no no wait a minute in terms of negative no, why, do, why don't you listen negative? to yeah, first of all let me finish the yeah, yes, question finish, is finish. not complete that's right see either you can talk in terms of negative theology no, or you no. can push uh, you can push it up to a certain point where you stop asking the question that no. is why this problem of self evident being comes into existence self evident being that particular argument without that argument no religion can survive no uh, religion can survive either in the west or in the east no religion can survive without the idea of self evident being without uh, that religion will be in tatters the very, your, very idea oh, of religion oh. would be in tatters Salim, you have to stop somewhere. Then only we can yeah, uh, try to reply. My, my argument is over. My argument okay. is over. You Now, can reply. For religion, yes. first of all, you not you don't need any logic. That is religious people. Now, my father, my mother, problem. they have not studied Aristotle. They have not studied no philosophy. Need. No they, need. No need. No need. No. Yeah. Still, they are believers. Yeah, my and again the point is that this is all the way. No, no. What you people, say is uh, religious people need a directive kind of framework. No, that is not true. No, no. No, that the fun. See, religion does not allow the possibility of proof. It simply argues that there is no need of any proof. No, no, that no. That is another extreme. See, see that is another extreme. You, when you when you bring in logic, fundamental logic should demand a certain degree of veracity. There is a veracity about the self-evident being. Yes, logic has a very. Lo you see, now depends on what kind of your logic talk about. There is no, inductive no, no. logic. There is deductive logic. There is a model logic. There is a model logic. There is a model in my deductive. All this that is not the central concern. No, I no. You say. My, you see. My you point see, is. No, no, no. Wait my, a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, If it is deductive logic, first concern is not truth. It's validity. But it, if it is inductive logic, the first concern is truth. I agree. I agree completely. Yeah. So what is the my problem then? My my the central problem is the second thing. The idea yeah, of the that? self the self evident being is is a hypothesis. It doesn't go beyond the level of hypothesis. From that you simply cannot jump because no, we, the very we, idea we, of a self evident being that itself is is you know punched with holes. No, and but, you see, of course, but of course, you need it because religion always will need that. Without a self-evident being, what can religion do? No, that's why I said again. You are coming back. You are repeating what you have said. We said religion yes. doesn't need any logic or any self-existent being. Have that you heard problem. about Levinas? Have you heard about Levinas? I have heard about Levinas. Yeah. I have. Le you are yeah. talking wait, about wait. Popper. You are talking yeah. about Popper. Now, but let, but me, let me let me let me speak about. My questions are very simple. Yeah, very I, I, simple, very simple common sense questions that I ask. Yeah, very what is that? Simple questions. The self-evident being. Yes. How not self-evident. Self-existent being. Not self evident. Self-existent and self-evident. Yes. These are these are both. The other two are. Not self-evident. The self -evident. religion rule. The no, other religion rule. Look, I know. Don't confuse between self-existent no, no, and self-evident. Self-evident and self-existent in the continuation of self-evident in manifestation. No, 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 no. In, no. That is not true. It is. It no. is. It is. No. How it can be evident? So, no. There are some. My point evident. is. My see. My simple point is the second statement of Clark is not that. What is the second uh, argument? The second statement is needed for religion to survive. No. Is a early. Is a early religion to live on. So I am. No. No. So no. 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 Yes. Yes. It is. It is. Self-evident, be a self-existent being, and the parayin is liyan. Do you religion and allow them to? No. Why do you argue that? I said no. Yeah. Religious people don't need any argument. That's why yeah. I was trying to say Levinas. No, we, Levinas. Are talking, we are talking. We are. We are. See, we are talking at cross purposes. That is the point. You are talking about? No. See, my simple point is, you know, when you are talking about, I mean, Clark is talking, not you, but when Clark is talking about the attributes of God. No, I didn't speak about it. I didn't touch up on the item. I told no, no, you. you I am... No, I am referring to the title. That's why I ask you why this book is uh, special or unique. I, because from the I have never gone through this book, Clark. I made it very clear at the beginning. From what I peruse, from what you said, what I surmise from what you said, 
my simple question is very very simple question in what way clark can jump from the second to the five, the conclusion given the fact that the second statement is pure hypothesis no you see now you are you are over reading logic he doesn't jump no i am not over reading no. that is in a way that is true that right. is when you say that in no. this world everything has a cause and no. then when the next moment we jump that there is something for which there is no cause. this is not the way no. to argue your no, gentleman no, 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 no. this is not the way to argue no no, 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 no. no, no. my point the is the very nature so, of logicism no 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 see, see my simple logic is you know when we say that a dependent a dependent being is has is caused by something else then the same logic will have to be extended to everything but by by necessity we define god in such a manner that he is self existent this is yes. where religion works yeah again you are arguing i told you know this is an argument one thing religion with the faith that's another thing you don't confuse between the both no 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 you see my point is since we are talking about the attributes of god or existence of god this question will come naturally no. you see religion is much before this kind of logic that is true that is yeah. true but then, that means, this is basically that means what retro, this is basic this no, is no, basically that, that retrospective means. falsification no no why even without retrospective thinking it has been so religion pre existed logic articulated logic and uh, aristotle is not the first human being who wrote uh, logica minora and logica maiora even before that there were human being there were religious practices so how can you argue logic is inevitable and uh, essential no that's my point don't confuse between logic and religion there are two things logic is better what do you believe if you can argue out and if you can prove that's much better because that becomes more intelligible to educated people that is the attempt of logic whereas for religion per se you don't need any logic and you have hundreds and hundreds of philosophers who would talk about that like kierkegaard like gabriel marcel even heidegger would talk about let of all the proofs go they don't trust in proof but why proof because intelligibility may be higher if you can succeed in proving that is the very purpose of every argument and i told you now repeatedly that the newness of samuel clark is not in that he gave a kind of perfect argument if you read st thomas the five ways that is exactly all cosmological argument in that way then afterwards there is a descartes then are leibniz all philosophers produce these all kind of arguments the big people like uh, hegel so therefore it's nothing new but the articulation the the what you call the cogence the coherence of the argument that is something unique to clark and my position is not to defend clark i don't get anything by defending clark i only explain what is clark i don't know salim is there okay now uh, need to uh, what are the possibilities of db training okay that's i already answered sir yes please uh, rather than a question this is asking your opinion on something yeah yes please if i know i can <laughs> yes yeah so a lot of social theorists and psychologists um, believe that religion and god is something that came after the development of human society for social to establish social control and that god is just a convenient existence okay so what do you mean on that yes i would say partially correct partially not correct because the first religion what people believe is what we call animism yes animism is the primitive religion at that time i don't think there was any psychology as a psychology is a very very new branch of yeah, the psychology the psychological view to this is that uh, man needs religion man needs god as a psychological escapism as in if there's a problem they have someone to blame if there's a problem they can just say oh yeah god gave me a punishment for something that's why everything is going downhill so it's like a psychological relief Uh, I don't think psychology would talk about that. 
because psychology i know there are philosophers like uh, freud like uh, jung they all speak about this religion is something what we call a projection of the unconscious there is a teaching that but even the same psychologists have affirmed the the what we call the usefulness of religion for example now you know the famous saying of carl jung yes sir yeah because carl jung is my field of specialization my research is on carl jung carl jung made a statement that europe should have become a mental asylum if there was nothing called confession yes this is the point yes so, that confession is something like a psychological counseling yes that's what he said now if europe makes sense simply because of this confession at the same time he wrote in his two essays on analytical psychology that religion is totally a human projection the projection of the unconscious yeah yeah so there are theories but what my point of view even before the science of psychology even before logic there were life of people with influence from religion beginning from i would say animism which is said to be the most ancient and primitive religion yeah. now the other one what we call established religion of course they have their own particular interest that we can't reject because in established religion there is organization and there are people at the helm of course they have administration and they of course they take advantage of that real religion doesn't need an organization as such therefore today people talk about charismatic religion more personal religion more than institutionalized religion i don't know you know the system in in europe especially in germany and other places if you are part of a religion you have to pay 1% tax therefore yeah. what they do in their identity card they write no religion so they can save 1% of their income yeah therefore today most of the people have no religion simply because of the social evil or social system of paying tax for religion now for example you introduce a religious tax in india how many people write in their in their identity that i am a hindu i am a muslim i am a christian you see in a religion there is a pragmatism in that way i would agree what you said when you need you pray but religion is not prayer alone religion i told you religare means to bind religion is relationship and religion is relationship if it is a relationship the lover and the beloved whatever relationship you can talk about they understand each other if it is a relationship but if it is purely prayer you ask that is the difference you can talk about religion is that is yes, that sir. okay with you? yes Yes, sir. So uh, there are no further questions. We come to the end of the sixth session okay. of talks. Yeah. So, in the name of Department of English of Saint Joseph's College, Devagiri, I thank Dr. Korean Kashyapali CMI for this great session. In spite of his busy schedules, he joined with us today to enlighten us with his wide range of ideas. So, thank you so much, dear Father Korean. Okay. I also thank, thank our beloved Vice Principal for the Anto NGCMI for the constant support he gives for the success of this event and also for joining with us today to deliver the introductory talk. Thank you so much, dear Father Anto. I thank all the participants for the active participation in today's session and we expect all of your kind participation in the upcoming sessions of Book Talks. So stay tuned for the next session of Book Talks. Wish you all a very happy weekend. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you, Ajit. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, thank you, Anto. Thank you, you scholars the second i think second batch yes brother yeah. second day. thank you have thank a nice you, evening god bless you thank you for thank you thank you brother thank you